All right, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday, Friday night out here. It's about 7 o'clock in the p.m., California time, May 24th, 2024, 6.55 p.m. here to be exact. In Northern California, real quick look at the earthquake globe. Shows a 1.7 into Hawaii and also a 4.1 here along the middle America Trench. We'll check this out here in just a little bit. I want to do a little bit more in-depth coverage here of the severe weather potential that's uh, looking highly likely tomorrow, uh, which is on the day Saturday. That will, For the most part, this is going to stir up late afternoon into the overnight hours, and this area just cannot get a break when it comes to the severe weather that's been occurring out here. A tornado outbreak is likely again here tomorrow as we deal with some very unstable conditions a lot of moisture being involved out here as well the storm prediction center uh, right now has this set for a moderate risk out here in our uh, main zone where we're, we're expecting to see things really amplify uh, in terms of the tornado and big time hail and wind threat out here uh, i wouldn't be surprised though if we see this bump up to a high now a high is the highest you can go level five in terms of severe weather potential out here uh, we've, you know, this is nothing to take lightly because this year has shown us that uh, the tornado activity is coming in uh, quite strong uh, due to the uh, conditions out here. So don't take, uh, you know, I wouldn't even take a marginal risk day uh, lightly, but tomorrow, especially, this needs to be um, paid attention to quite uh, strongly. You need to watch what's going on out here in the weather tomorrow. Big deal. It's going to be uh, everyone's at home, right? It's a weekend. Got to keep your family safe. So it's good to uh, take heed to the warnings that's going to take place out here when the severe weather fires up. Now, right now, there's that moderate risk stretching from roughly about north central Kansas down into uh, southern Oklahoma here. But you don't have to be in this moderate zone to experience uh, some strong damaging tornadoes and uh, large hail and severe wind gust out here. Uh, you can be anywhere out here basically, but this is the most likely region of where all the dynamics are going to come together, come into play, and basically stir up the severe weather potential for tomorrow. Now the tornado threat, uh, there you go, 15% chance hatched area, a huge population of um, people out there could be affected we're talking about the oklahoma city area even up in the wichita kansas norman oklahoma wichita falls texas so that extends down into northern texas as well we're, oh well over four and a half million people going to be under the gun tomorrow in terms of severe weather this is a big deal um the the to be a you know to survive stuff like this one needs to be um in a in a information state they need to always be aware of what's going on in terms of the weather around them if there's a tornado warning around them obviously take shelter if you have no shelter around get somewhere super safe and um you know if you don't have a the tornado shelter obviously you got to uh, find the, the most uh, the best location for you uh, in terms of safety uh, because tomorrow's a big deal there's that tornado risk right you throw in the wind risk up here. That's a little bit more north here towards Kansas. They're going to be dealing with some very strong straight line winds from these thunderstorms that develop. Uh, the hatched area up here, look at that, 45%. That is quite high. Uh, looking at 65 knots or greater uh, in that region within about 25 miles of a point. Now also, large hail is going to be falling out of the sky as well. So you take any, even a light breeze on some large hail out here and that's going to be doing some damage you don't even need the wind for large hail right but uh you know kick it up 40 50 mile per hour winds with a uh, baseball size hail or larger speaking of that let me show you guys what they're what they're chatting about here um, they are stating that uh, the hail is going to be over four inches extreme hail over four inches is expected with such strong instability and impressive mid to upper level wind speeds. Now, you know, tornado activity, obviously that's something of concern, wind as well. But when you got these hailstones over four inches, that's over softball size hail. Goodness. So they mentioned here, very large hail is likely initially with the increasing tornado threat with long-lived supercells as they evolve eastward 
through the evening. Long tracked and violent tornadoes will be possible as the low level jet increases during the evening while maintaining a very moist and unstable boundary layer. Let me show you guys here the HRR map. This is early afternoon, roughly about um, five o'clock or so, late afternoon, I should say. Uh, we get these storms fired up here on the western side of Oklahoma, parts of northern Texas. As we bump into the later into the afternoon, this is about an hour later. Uh, we start to see these supercells develop and evolve. And looking at this composite image here, this is the composite reflectivity from pivotal weather with convection allowing, uh, shows that these are going to be some, uh, some hefty storms. This is not going to be just a little general thunderstorm that pops up. These are going to be long-lived supercells with extreme violent tornado activity associated uh, with one that can get fired up in terms of rotation. I was just looking at the um, significant tornado parameter here for this area. Roughly about that time frame uh, for late Saturday uh, into the evening hours. And look at that. That is quite dynamic. It is uh, way up there in terms of the uh, legend here. In terms of the, the highest possible reading where this significant tornado parameter exists looks like it's just south of oklahoma city there's quite a bit up here as well but man uh, there's there's some um, some decent readings out here a pds uh tornado signature with many of these readings uh so tomorrow like i said it's not going to be a day to just you know uh barbecue and go back inside and watch the game or something tomorrow's going to be a day to watch your weather radar Keep an eye on the local news, keep an eye on the sky, uh, and make sure the family is advised of uh, what to do when a uh, potentially uh, dangerous situation occurs around the region. Uh, there's also, let me see here, where did I bring it up? Okay, so that's going to be the HRRR model, which shows what it may look like tomorrow. And... Uh, it's it's scary looking those are big time supercells a lot of those rotating look at the cell right down here that looks pretty interesting marginal risk for tornado but any of these storms could fire up in the environment that's occurring uh, tomorrow it's gonna be very moist and a uh, little on the sketchy side for sure uh, supercell composite this basically tells you where uh, most of the energy is gonna be and it's still you know, as you can see here, this is the HRR model uh, within Oklahoma area, parts of northern Texas as well. Uh, it's just going to be a day. It doesn't matter where you're at out here, Kansas, Oklahoma, northern Texas, anywhere out there in this region. It could extend even into northern uh, Kansas and southern Nebraska up here as well, in the, even into Missouri. Uh, anywhere out here needs to be on guard for tomorrow's activity, late afternoon, overnight hours as well. Um, you know, the best thing you guys could do is be prepared. Keep your notifications on your phone so you can get advised when severe weather is occurring in your area. There's numerous weather apps out there. Majority of them are free. Uh, so it doesn't cost anything to download it onto your iPhone, your Android, whatever you're using. And be advised of when a tornado or severe thunderstorm a warning is issued in your region i'm sure there'll be tor tornado watches put out here tomorrow sometime and i wouldn't doubt it if we see things amplify up into the high risk category with their wording so pretty crazy right but uh you know hopefully this will come to an end it's been a very active pattern out here uh, for the day on Sunday, the day after, that weather shifts a little bit further to the east. Uh, and these guys are going to deal with the same type of uh, potential there. Sunday. Of course, tomorrow going to be Saturday. There we go. Look at that. We'll cover, we'll cover Sunday as we get a little bit closer. But uh, this is a, a pretty big deal. Uh, there's numerous weather models to keep an eye on. Um, I do like to use... Uh, not only Pivotal Weather, but Tropical Tidbits, which has their own built-in systems here. Uh, the NAM model can give us all oh, that's not quite loaded yet. But the previous runs here, 
will give us a good indicator of where these storms may start firing up tomorrow and um, what to look for. This is being a little bit lenient here, it looks like. This is a NAM 3KM model, and this is for late tomorrow afternoon. It only shows about one or two supercells popping up, but I don't believe that. Sometimes these weather models can be way off. So, um, you know, it's... Certain ones showing more activity up north, but I don't believe that at all. We need to... Uh, spit out the, uh, you know, sort out the truth from some of the models that are less lenient. Either way, the conditions out here are going to be very moist. And uh, you got that, that system that's just going to come in and create that dry line set up. And we should be uh, looking at some big time severe weather. There's going to be a lot of uh, Cape activity as well in terms of the energy produced out here. It's just going to be all over the place in terms of firing up thunderstorms. So, um, you know, again, we'll cover that early in the morning tomorrow. We'll get a better look at it. I think they will go uh, high risk. We'll see. Quite rare if they do, but uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on it. All right, earthquake activity real quick. Just a real quick recap. Anything else going on here in the last 24 hours? Well, since this morning's update, Hawaii has seen a little bit more of an uptick going on here in the last few hours around the east rift zone. Notice this trail of activity down here. Uh, so things are starting to get a little bit more active down here in this area of Hawaii. Uh, the volcano still currently sits at a yellow and advisory. So no change right now uh, to this status. But we are seeing uh, some fairly shallow earthquake activity out here uh, in this region. Let me check out the seismograph station here real quick. Uh, zoom in and see what we got. Um, right here. Yeah, notice the earthquake activity has been somewhat non-existent there over the last 24 hours up until uh, the last few hours, it looks like. Yeah, maybe stretching back to late afternoon, but things have been kind of on the mellow side out here, but we are seeing things starting to uh, kick back up. The deformation has been on a steady incline in terms of inflation here over the last couple days. Here's the last week indicating magma inflation there or summit inflation from the magma below. And it's just been steadily increasing here. So we'll watch, see how much further this goes up uh, because we are at our highest level here uh, in terms of inflation since 2018. We're going up and up and up. So something's bound to happen, right? Uh, Iceland activity. See what we got here for earthquake activity around Iceland. Not a whole lot. Things are just still at a standstill out here across the Iceland region and the Grindavik area and the Craters region. This is another area that's looking at highly inflated ground um, structure below. A lot of magma accumulating underneath this area. Just a matter of time before that kicks up as well. Southern California earthquake activity. Really not seeing any major swarming going on. Just a handful of earthquakes out here. Uh, a look at the bigger picture. Uh, shows, um, well, let's see, have we had anything over this way? Looks like 4.9 Indonesia, getting a little bit of movement up the Java Trench here. 4.6 Indonesia area. Uh, aside from that, you know, things are just kind of really not super active right now in the earthquake department. Space weather activity, we do have that bright region out here, this New sunspot out there on the northeastern limb. We're finally getting a little bit better perspective of it on the magnetogram image right here. Decent looking uh, sunspot. Doesn't look super complex, but it does harbor some uh, potential there for some flaring. That's uh, going to be 3691. That was former sunspot 3663, if I remember right. Um, I believe that's what it was called. 3663 last time it was over here on the earth facing side of the sun now you know it did a, a full trip around the sun and now it's coming back into view 3664 the culprit of all the x flare and cme activity and the aurora events recently 
is getting closer as well. So we'll get a better look at that here in the uh, in a few days or so. That still looks fairly active. So 36.63, which is now 36.91. There's an image of it. It, uh, for the most part, you know, like I said, looks a little complex. Not super complex, but we can't see all of it. So we'll get a little bit better view of that in the morning time. Uh, the rest of the area out here looks fairly quiet. Uh, there is some sunspots, but they are all relatively stable. Not a whole lot going on there. Overall threat, though, still remains somewhat elevated. 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 60. X flare at around 10% chance or so. And there is your uh, look there at the visible sunspot regions. 3691 uh, shows a beta class, but uh, I don't know. We'll have to see as that comes back around. Get a little bit better view of that tomorrow. Uh, no major roars in the forecast. As you can th see, things are uh, just slowly going down. Let's see if they've updated this yet. They haven't. Sunspot number progression is still from April. Well, what's going on here? I'm not for sure uh, what's up. I don't know if Kevin hasn't updated his site here, or maybe it's the Space Weather Prediction Center folks here. But uh, Anywho... Yeah, things are just kind of calm for now. That goes along with the earthquake activity and volcanic activity. It's almost like everyone's getting ready for the show to begin. But the question is, what show is going to begin out here? We'll cover this and more tomorrow, folks. Um, and we'll get a better perspective of the possibilities of a high risk out here tomorrow for the severe weather. Again, nothing to mess around with. This is uh, going to be a dangerous day. And um, it's best to be, pre pre be prepared. I do have quite a bit of viewers in Oklahoma and Kansas and Texas. So I want everyone to be safe and their families. And uh, it's, it's definitely going to be a day to stay weather aware. Uh, forget about the game. Forget about, uh, I mean, early in the day is going to be good. But late afternoon, uh, once those storms start firing up, that's a sign to be uh, very observant of the weather. Tomorrow. Saturday, late afternoon into the overnight hours. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later. Stay safe out there.